So let us begin chanting together. Om Sada Shiva Okay, so we had completed verse number Thirty-three, right? So we are on the thirty-fourth verse. So let us chant that together. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Akirtim cha pibhutani. Akirtim cha pibhutani. Kathayashanti tevayam. Ambhavitasya Jakirti Maranadati Ritsyate Okay, so I'm just muting your <clears throat> All right. So look at the words. Akirtim cha api bhutani. Akirtim cha api bhutani. Kathayash, kathayash yanti te avyayam. Savagra has to be dropped. So kathayash yanti te avyayam. Sambhavitasya cha. Akirti broken up carefully. Sambhavitasya cha akirti Maranat ati richate. Sambhavitasya akirti Maranat ati richate. So, and the Anvaya is. Cha. Bhutani apite avyayam akirti kathayashyanti. Full stop. Sambhavitasya cha akirti maranat ati richyade. So, Bhutani api, all other beings. So, here, of course, we are talking about. Living beings, not all jivas, all human beings. Bhutaniyapi, all of the human beings. What will they do? Te kathayashyanti. They will talk about your, te istava, your. Kathayashyanti mean will tell about your. What about you? Avyayam akirtihi. About your unfading. That because they are always telling, it will become avyayam. Avyayam means changeless or eternal. So that story is about your akirtihi. That these bad actions of yours, which mean what? You are running away from battle. Essentially, akirtihi means you have turned your back on the battle and run away because you are afraid. So that story they will keep on telling. And what is the problem with that? Sambhavitasya. You are a person who has always been th- talked about with great respect, with great honor. So, Sambhavitasya. For that person, Akirtihi Maranath Atirichyate. Akirtihi, dishonor. Atirichyate is worse than Maranath, worse than death. So, for a person who has always had uh, honor, honorably been spoken of for him, People talking about him in a bad manner is worse than death. So, now, do you notice a difference in the approach of Krishna? First, what did he do? 
ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಹೀಗೆ ಇರಲಿ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಆದಿ ವೈದಾಂತಿಕ್ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಓವರ್ ನಾವು ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಈ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಐ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ and laukika so this is the laukika drishti so what is the, what is laukika drishti the worldly angle the pragmatic angle right so supposing i do not believe in punyam and papa means arjuna doesn't let us say it's hypothetically let us say arjuna doesn't believe in punyam and papa why because punyam and papa ma adrishtam they are not available for proof for perception and they are only known how through shastra pramana there is no other way of knowing that my bad actions generate papam and my good actions generate punyam that is not available for indriyas so in their indriya agocharam and that is why they are adrishtam there is no way of proving using any scientific tool known to us that punyam is generated through good actions and papam is generated through bad actions so let us say that i do not believe in punyam or papa and therefore i do not believe in swarga and narga it's a, it's a hypothetical argument <clears throat> you know it's a argument for argument sake supposing arjuna you do not believe in all this and you don't believe that by running away from the war you will go to narga and all that so supposing you don't believe then can i run away from the war if arjuna asks this is krishna's answer no you can't run away krishna arjuna you still have to fight the war why because from the laukika drishti from the so society angle if you do not fight this war you will be dishonored your the respect that you enjoy in society you will lose that so your name and fame you will lose you know and this is a very powerful argument actually from the angle of the bhagavad gita this is the third and the lowest argument the first one is what vedantically you know nobody dies no no you don't die nor does vedantically everybody is atma nobody is killed nobody is the killer that is the most powerful argument but that if that does not work then the duty concept is being told by krishna and dharmika part of it your duty you have to do as a warrior right now we all know that vedantically and most of us don't bother and duty wise also you know convenience takes precedence over duty but your status in society that is very important to everybody what will other people think about log kya kahenge to use a very famous hindi movie expression you know supposing my son or daughter wants to marry somebody from another community what will people think so i don't think about what my son or daughter wants right i think what will people think of me so this is the problem what will people think of him and my family and me and the family and what i have done how i have upbringing him upbring him you know, how i have you know brought him up they will all blame me so they will say that this son has given a bad name to my family and kul ka naam mitti mein mila diya all those things you know duniya ko muh dekhne ke rakh muh dekhne ke kabil nahi rakha all those arguments will be used remember these arguments are not based on the merits or the demerits of whatever is being discussed so the action whether it is good or bad is not being discussed at all what is being discussed is how will i say show my face outside what will people think of me and my family and this argument is a very powerful argument and most because it appeals directly to your ego and devo krishna is saying arjuna you have got such a great name and fame you are considered the greatest warrior in the world after all you have you know fought with lord shiva also and impressed him so that he gave you a divine weapon and now if you go away like this bhutani bhutani kashyanti all people will talk they will insult you criticize you and they will spread rumors and that kind of bad reputation avyayam never goes away never changing it will be passed from generation to generation 100 generations later when people talk about you they will say oh that arjuna he ran away from the battle because he was afraid of duryodhana 
and now krishna adds a little bit more salt to this whole story supposing you know you are not a person who is famous in society right and if somebody talks badly about you okay it's not pleasant when somebody talks badly about you when a reputation is harmed it is not pleasant but since you are not well known there is not much of a reputation to harm but supposing you you are very well known you are a great acharya or you are a great warrior you are a very great politician you know known known as a very great dani all these things are there and then apamanam comes then humiliation comes it can be very very painful excruciatingly painful and therefore krishna says sambhavitas it is not that you are a unknown person arjuna you are known as the greatest warrior you have enjoyed fame and that kind of, for that kind of a person maranat atirichate therefore fighting is better because that kind of bad reputation for a person like you who has lived all his life enjoying a great reputation that is worse than death and therefore krishna saying hey arjuna it is better to die fighting than to live with this bad reputation this is a laukik drishta this is a worldly angle laukik drishta so he continues with this in the next verse which we will chant so please unmute yourself <laughs> somebody has given some chat let me just see okay fine thank you sir all right so we look at verse number 35 please unmute yourself and we can chat भयाद्रणादुपरत मंस्यंते महारहाहमत so i thought i heard somebody say mansyante what is the correct pronunciation mamsyante why is mamsyante correct pronunciation Anuswara. The following sa. Sakar. The anuswara is followed by sa. Yeah. Sa varga. Okay, so it has to be mum and not man. Mum siente tuam maharata. Okay, so now let me just mute you all, and we look at the grammar of the verse. Bhayat. So bhayad. Rana uparatam. Okay, the three words are there in that. They have to break them correctly. Bhayat plus ranat plus uparatam. Then mamsyante tvam maharathaha yesham <coughs> yesham cha tvam bahumataha bhutva yasyasi lagavam. <coughs> So, hey Maharatha, Anvaya, hey Maharatha, Tvam Bhayat Ranat Uparatam Mamsyante Tvam Bhayat Ranat Uparatam Mamsyante Full stop Yesham Cha Bahu Mataha Bhutva Tvam Laghavam Yasyasi महारथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथाथा
pranat uparataham. <coughs> what does uparati? Run away. Uparati is run away, but in Tatvabhada, did you come across the word uparati? Withdrawal of mind. Yes. Uparama. 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 Uparati. Uparati. Two words. They mean withdrawal. So, Ranat Uparatam. It's coming from that word. Ranat is battle. Withdrew from the battle. Use every opportunity you have to link any word to an earlier word which you already know. Okay. And therefore, that's how we keep increasing our Sanskrit vocabulary. Even if you're not formally learning Sanskrit, in the learning of Bhagavad Gita, if you manage to link each word with what you already know, <coughs> you will it will become you know embedded in your mind. So that I am trying to at every every opportunity I will try to link. So here uparam uparatam is uparati or uparama of Tatvaboda. So Ranat Uparatam withdrew from the battle. <coughs> so what will happen? The great warriors, Maharataha Mansyante, they will think that from Bhayat Ranat Uparatam. You withdrew from the battle. You ran away from the battle out of bhayat, bhayam, out of fear. And yesham cha. Among all those maharatis, bahumataha, you were highly honored. Yesham cha bahumataha. Among all those maharatis, they all thought of you very highly. Bahumataha. Bhutva. So you have been very highly honored among all those maharatis. But if you do this, Swam Laghavam Yasyasi. They will think that you have become a lightweight. You have become insignificant, they will think. So this is what is being said. The great warriors will think of you as a person who has run away from the battle out of fear. And <clears throat> you who were earlier much honored by all these warriors as a great warrior and a great person, you will be disgraced. This is the meaning. Okay. Now, can you tell me this verse? So, this, this is the way we try to learn. We try to connect this verse, entire verse, is an explanation, explanation of which two words in the previous verse? You have to connect this verse to which two words of verse number 34? Akirti. 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 Yeah. Mm. Akirti is an avyayam akirti also. So it can be either one word or two words. Okay. So he's explaining what is meant by that akirti. He's explaining how humiliation, apamana, how humiliation will affect Arjuna if he runs away from the battle. <clears throat> now remember, if you look at the first chapter and part of the second chapter, first 10 verses, there was no fear evident in Arjuna from the battle. Right? He, his reasons for getting away from the battle is not fear. But it is misplaced compassion for Bhishma and Dronacharya. But that you know and I know and Krishna knows because we were privy to Arjuna's conversation with Krishna. But what is being mentioned here is that Durodhana, Durodhana's people are not going to know all this. All the Maharatis, they have not heard this conversation and therefore they are going to say that Bhayat Ranat Oparatam. Arjuna, you withdrew from the battle out of fear of us. What kind of fear? Fear of great warriors like Karana and Bhishma and all those things. And, and therefore he says, until this moment, they were all had great respect for you. Because you were all greatly respected person among all these warriors. Because of that, because of the fact that earlier you were very much respected, when they start talking badly about you, you will become a lightweight in their opinion and that is going to be very, very painful for you. What can be more painful for you than that? This is what is being said. Now we chant the 36th verse. So please unmute yourself. Avachyavadam shabahun 
ವಿಷ್ಯಂತ ವಾಹಿತಸ್ತವ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ತುಖತರ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಅವಾಚ್ಯ ವಾದಾನ್ ದ್ರೇಕ್ ಅವಾಚ್ಯ ವಾದ ಚ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಬಹೂನ್ ವದಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ತವ ಅಹಿತಾಹ ಸೊ ತವ ಅಹಿತ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರೋಕನ್ ಇಂಡ ತವ ಅಹಿತಾಹ ಅಂಡ್ ನಿಂದಂತ ತವ ಇಸ್ ನಿಂದಂತ ತವ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ತತಃ ದುಃಖತರ ನು ಕಿಂ ತತಃ ದುಃಖತರ ನು ಕಿಂ ದ ಅನ್ವಯ ಇಸ್ ಚ ತವ ಅಹಿತಾಹ ಕಮ ತವ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ನಿಂದಂತ ಬಹೂನ್ ಅವಾಚ್ಯ ವಾದಾನ್ ವದಿಷ್ಯಂತ ಬಹೂನ್ ಅವಾಚ್ಯ ವಾದಾನ್ ವದಿಷ್ಯಂತ ತವ ಅಹಿತ ತವ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯ ನಿಂದಂತ ಬಹೂನ್ ಅವಾಚ್ಯ ವಾದಾನ್ ವದಿಷ್ಯಂತ ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಕಿಂ ನು ತತಃ ದುಃಖತರ ಸೊ ತವ and the first ch ch is that and here it is not and it has to be understood as moreover in addition to what i have just said that is the meaning of ch tava ahitaha so here remember ahita means what normally unpleasant ahita is basically uske burai mein ahit ko dega no hita means benefit no. ahita means no. not benefit no. right so ahitaha is prasama vibhakti so what does it mean it's the karta it's the karta so those who want your what they call who want ill for you ahitaha so ahita here means the enemies shatru remember that okay it is not just that it is not good for you it is those people who don't want good for you your enemies ahitaha so tava ahitaha your enemies what will they do nindantaha they will speak badly they will look down upon they will be little you tava samarthyam your powers your abilities they will run down and bahun avachya they will give you bahun many now avachya is vachya means to speak avachya means that which cannot be spoken so we say in hindi na bolne layak nahi hai those words which should not be spoken and therefore bahun avachya vadan vadan is words so bahun avachya vadan is many words which should never be spoken which means they are so bad words them they are so badly they are speaking about you that such word should never be spoken so that is how it is to be understood bahun avachya vada many unutterable words vadishyanti future tense they will speak about you and kim nu so the this is no here is indeed kim nu what indeed tataha dukkataram can be more painful than that so dukkha dukkataram is most painful dukkataram is a superlative degree so most painful dukkham tataha dukkataram what can be more painful than that that is what i'm saying right when plain in english they will speak badly about you your yeah, enemies will utter many words about you which should never be spoken running down your abilities deriding you what can be more painful than that because here arjuna you were once a person who had who was greatly respected this is what krishna is saying so what is krishna doing he is saying that he is explaining the consequences of withdrawing from the battle to arjuna 
So as I said, ahitaha means chatruhu, the enemies. So ahitaha here has to be understood as kauravas. And avachyan vadishyanti, they will abuse you, they will spread <coughs> rumors about you. It will be difficult. And avachya vada, Krishna is saying, I can't even begin to say those words. Such words they will use. Avacha vadan. Mahun vadishanti. Many will say. And they will. Tava samarthyam nindantaha. They will criticize you. They will run you down. What can be more painful than that? Right? This argument is often given in Shastra. Right? It is called instigating a person. Now, for example, the story of Kamsa and uh, Devaki's eight son. Kamsa decides to kill Devaki, right? You remember the story. Why? Because somebody, there's some astrologer or somebody has told him there has been a prediction that Devaki's eighth son will be his killer. Then Vasudev argues with Kamsa and fails, right? All the arguments fail. Ultimately, what does Vasudev say? He uses a very powerful argument. Your family who come, hey Kamsa, has a wonderful name and fame. Do you want your name to go down as the killer of your own child? Out of fear of a child who is, out of fear of a son who is yet to be born. Do you want such, you know, humiliation? So what does Kamsa do? Kamsa puts his sword aside that point of time. So that's to, this is the argument which is used. So this is a weakness of a Kshatriya. You know, appealing to his honor. And therefore, Krishna is using that weakness and saying, Tata dukkataram, dukkataram, okay, what can be more painful than humiliation for a Kshatriya? <clears throat> so, in the Shastram, you know, we say Kshatriya has two bodies. And this has nothing to do with the Sharira Trayam, three bodies which are uh, gross, subtle, and Karana Shariram. They say every Kshatriya has two bodies. One body is Mamsakaya. Made of flesh. Mamsa kayam. Mamsa karyam. Made of flesh. And the other one is Yasha kayam. So Yasha is what? Good name and reputation. So the Kshatriya has two bodies. One is made of flesh. And one body consists of his reputation. If it's a good name. And it is said that, Shastra says that, if it comes to a choice between the two, that man who is a Kshatriya, who is a real Kshatriya, will protect the Yashakaya even at the cost of Mamsakaya. Kaya is what? Body. So Yashakaya, Mamsakaya. And therefore Arjuna, he says here, forget about your Mamsakaya. Protect your Yashakaya. For, for that, you have to fight the war. Arjuna, you have no choice but to fight the war. Okay. Right. Now we look at the 37th verse which we will chant. You may think we are going fast, but there is nothing much to explain. So we are doing that. Yes, please, go ahead. Normally, uh, wouldn't we go the other way, uh, from Laukika to Dharmika to Adhyatmika? Yeah, but this is, the first, Krishna is the most powerful argument. Then the next part, one, and the least one. It's not the other way. First you you know that, in fact, if you look at the Are whole... Somebody for whom the uh, highest order of uh, reasoning has not worked. Uh, I mean, considering that Arjuna is Arjuna, uh, shouldn't it have worked the other way? I mean, I'm not... <laughs> no, I think we, the discussion will go nowhere because we are then criticizing the action of Krishna. Right? So we don't... When Krishna talks, we take it that right. our understanding is not correct. Okay. So we don't say that Krishna should have said this. No, I'm just thinking that should we also do it when we, you know, we start from a higher level of argument and then come down or should we do the other way? So that it stemmed from that. If you can convince somebody using Adhyatmika argument, nothing like it. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember here, the most potent argument is basically the Dharmika argument, right? the Lokika argument. Mm -hmm. For Agnani, the strongest argument is Lokika. This can be immediately, immediately related. To it. <clears throat> you can immediately relate to it. He is not going to understand uh, your uh, Adhyatmika or your, uh, what do you call, Laukika. You know, or, or your, sorry, 
dharmika for him you appeal to his ego and he immediately function and that is how you work you always use the worldly argument first that's why they give the example of kamsa so acharya ji uh, arjuna was an adhikari so krishna must have thought to give the adhyatmik drishti first no actually i did explain during the second chapter also that normally you would give the karma kanda first because that is the way that the veda is also structured you first come to karma and then okay. come to gnana okay. or so we don't question we just said that this is how it is so we have to mentally reshuffle the teaching in our understanding first, first look at the karma kanda and then look at gnana kanda because we are even uncapable incapable of even beginning to understand teach like that so you no know, to look at how krishna should have presented is probably not a good thing it undermines your faith in the pramanam so we don't criticize the pramanam we say that yes this is the way it has been presented but in our understanding when i present it to somebody else i should present if i am not teaching bhagavad gita but presenting vedanta in general then i should always present what first karma kanda then what upasana kanda and then gnana that is the normal flow that is how i should understand also uh om ravi ji i yeah. had the same question was lingering in my head what uh, sumana ji asked so um so when you when you uh when krishna says approaches the vedanta first and then the dharma and then the karma so isn't it that arjuna if he understands the first part the vedantic part why would he need the rest of the uh, but did arjuna understand did arjuna say that mm-hmm. yes i am now a gnani okay so he is just he is just absorbing and the krishna is whatever no means. you can very clearly know that krishna had krishna known uh-huh. had krishna been sure that he was adhikari why would have there been a need in the 11th chapter for divya chakshu hmm 11th chapter he says i will remove your raga dosha temporarily for you no? which hmm. means what even at the 11th chapter he is still an adhikari for example acharya ji yeah just let, let, let one person complete and then the other person can say yes mangala go on um for example say uh, in a very simple uh, example like when i'm teaching my child or somebody um what approach should i take when it comes to um uh, any any lesson that needs to be uh, taught normally you won't find the need for three three tier teaching yeah you will teach what is you know the basic if the person always. if the person can understand can i go the other way around like laukika first and then the uh, dharmika and then adhyatmika so the understanding that uh, adhyatmika is a very powerful argument is for us as adhikaris mm-hmm. but if you are talking to your 16 year old son Mm-hmm. thought to do something will you appeal to his vanity or will you appeal to shastra sometimes if they understand the laukika part and then they are ready to understand the other also can we is what i am trying to say you always try the laukika first because that is the most right. powerful argument for people who are not adhikaris <laughs> okay. and therefore in terms of power in terms of its impact the arguments are reversed when it comes for the in when it comes to a adhi, adhikari mm-hmm. and when it comes to an anadhikari or for agnyani it is always laukika which is most powerful okay for him adhyatmika is just by the way if ad, laukika doesn't appeal then you can talk about duties that is also you can understand mm. but uh, different with atma and atma is not bothered but for a gnani for a person who is adhikari atma chatushtayam obviously for him you will say that this is the most powerful argument is atma na if he doesn't understand that then only will you go and talk to him about the nitya nitya karma and then about laukika which is what krishna did okay thank you okay somebody else wanted yeah uh, my view uh, i wanted to express is that when we learn the things we have to learn first laukika and then upasana and then gyan yes once we have attained that yes. now when we have to apply we see the the abilities of that 
or person where to pitch if he is a totally a gyani then we go for loki yeah if he is already gyani then we go for uh, for the gyan so the thing is that chapter 2 is basically opening summary yeah. opening summary necessarily has to contain it's like the newspaper headlines you know you the tv headlines it contains everything in short and then later you take those things and expand so opening summary is he is presenting you with a very brief synopsis of the next 17 chapters after having done that he goes to chapter 3 which is in great detail what karma yoga so chapter 3 is in from chapter 3 the particular order is reversed then karma yoga comes chapter 4 is part karma part gnana after 5 is gnana chapter 6 is 6 is nididhyasana so that way the, the flow is very logical providing you can you know untangle Thank the you. preconceived ideas which we have skipping kar le brush kar le main doodh bana deti hu thank you okay so acha yes please can can logic or understanding also be misinterpreted uh, especially in you know like in honor killing that has been so prevalent in india yes it can be but you know honor killing the reputation is, that's why i said you always appeal to that first it's a very very strong uh, you know understanding but then that understanding is based on what on a false reputation that people will think like this i agree your point is correct it is misinterpreted very often and that is why it's a dangerous argument to use because that is the argument used by everybody to make others commit things which they should not be doing when you poke your husband and tell him can't you even do this you're doing the same thing right yes, yes. when the, when the husband pokes you and says can't you do this is the same thing you are appealing to that part of you which is most vulnerable because you are caught deha vimanam so it has to be used very cautiously it as far as possible it should not be used yes and if you are using it with pure in- purity in your mind then it is okay but you look at yourself and you know that every time you have used an argument with your spouse mm-hmm. it has always been to instigate i mean all mm-hmm. wives all wives and all have husbands actually war is also a honor killing not in this case how do you say that when the battle is there it is only for the honor of the country that all killing takes place it is for the uh, you know for saving the country like if that saving is saving or honor of the uh, country i don't think it's honor it is basically to prevent your people from being killed what is happening in afghanistan you know the taliban have run the place over I mean, they're doing all sort of unmentionable things. That kind of situation. That is should, a horror killing. That is not a honor killing. So that, that is a is, horror killing. That should not arise, and that is yeah. why you have an army. They, that is in their own country. They are killing their own country. Taliban, I think, you know, unfortunately, the name Taliban means a student. You know, <laughs> very sadly, but you know. Anyway, so that's something. So, um, so yeah. So the same a uh, question. I'm um, basically uh, what was going on in my head was in this case the loki and the dharma are they concur like all the three they concur mm-hmm. they are all towards the same objective. But in real life, like in like there are many times when the loki uh, angle uh, can be against the dharma. Like I can find in myself in a situation which can give me same worldly wise, but it it can be wrong to do. no so, you as long as you have your uh, basic values clear see it is easy to inter- that's why i said dharmika and laukika can be very easily misinterpreted because you can use arguments either way you are appealing to what you are appealing to the ego of a person that is why it's dangerous the same argument which you can use for making some action which is uh, not dharmika making it appear dharmika it can be used in reverse also it all depends on how clear your mind is 
that is why I keep on saying clarity of mind is extremely important for Vedantic. You must know what is right and what is wrong. Mm. And there's one very simple rule. What is not right for me is not right for anybody else. So, sir, in the hierarchy, like I have to choose what is dharmic, what is right, even if it is not good in the logical sense. Exactly. And that is what I should teach my kid also. Also. Always for... do what is right. Yeah. yeah. And then you will say, what about situations where you can, you know, compromise? Well, there are no answers to that. Situations where? Where compromise is there. You know, for example, you come late to office, let us say. Very simple mm. example. Mm. And you got late because you got up late. Your mm. boss says, why did you come late? You say, you know, I missed my bus. I missed my train. Mm. Right or wrong? Yeah. And the argument usually will be, whom does it harm? Mm. Whom does it harm? Points, can I say? Myself, because Me. I'm getting into a wrong habit. Yes, you are harming yourself. So there is no question now. You should have said, I am late because I got up late. But the impact of that would have been wrong and everybody around will tell you, Are you are a bevaku for bolnik. You simply say, I got late. Mm. 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 So can I say? Yes, please go ahead. So... Uh... In fact, when we were talking about uh, Vedantic and then Dharmic and then Lokic, so uh, frankly speaking, with the discussion comes up very well, uh, establishes very well, ki pehle to we should be establishing the uh, correct Vedantic point yes. of view and then take it to the Lokic only. Then second thing, yes. uh, we were talking about... Uh, the video be on it, on it. So when we were talking about that fame kharab ho jayega when people try to like somebody says ki, uh, husband says that to the wife or to the woman let's not say husband wife man says to the woman that you don't even know this or this that so that's trying to put it down but then actually in many ways it happens even with men you see especially then they are not able to earn properly or take care of the house or study. So those pressures are there equally on men also. So it, that kind of humiliation is done in society for both the senses, the genders. <laughs> it's almost become like an almost a, a, a categorical statement that it becomes more for women. It does become more for women, but it does become for men also. Yeah. Okay, Spandana, go ahead. Spandana, I see your hand. Um, Om Raviji, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, these arguments, the Lokika arguments, while, I mean, they seem like they will get the job done, um, I feel, uh, and I'm wondering, aren't they counterproductive to the qualities a spiritual aspirant needs to develop? If um, a spiritual aspirant needs strong vairagya, these arguments seem to take them even further into... Absolutely. You know, I agree with you. But remember, the context I mean, here is what? The war has to start. <laughs> And Krishna is doing everything possible to ensure that Arjuna does a duty. So here, even though Adhyatmika argument was used, basically what the focus is on Nitya Karma. Why Nitya Karma? Because Nitya Naimitya Karma is what? <laughs> Somebody has got their uh, what they call mic open and there's some talking going on. Can you please mute yourself? So I'll just mute them and then whoever wants to talk can. So yeah, so I was saying... The idea is Nitya Naimaja Karma is what confers Chitta Shuddhi if done with the proper attitude. So that is the purifier. And, and what Krishna is trying to do is to ensure that Arjuna does his Nitya Naimaja Karma so that his mind gets purified, so that the Atma Gyanam can work on him. That is why the focus on getting him to do his duty. But you think as a 
for a guru to use these arguments, it's um, a bit manipulative. The guru will do anything to make you get do your duty. Once you start doing the duty, then he will talk to you about the quality required for the duty. That is this passion. Mm -hmm. And that will give you Chitta Shuddhi. The responsibility of a guru is not to make you feel comfortable. It is to make sure that you get sadhana chatushtaya. So in that field, yes, Krishna did that. But in the teaching field, what does the teacher do? He gives you all the tools and then leaves you to make a decision for yourself. And then there are many people who go back to the teacher and say, there are many who come to me and say that this is what I feel I should be doing or should not be. At that point of time, I tell them, this is what you should be doing according to me. According to Shastram, you should be doing this. Ultimately, choice is yours, which is what Krishna tells Arjuna in the 18th chapter. Okay, I have said all this, he says, but yatha ichhasi, tatha karu. Do exactly what you think is right. Mm -hmm. Krishna has said all this. Ultimately, the choice is left to Arjuna, which is what a teacher should do. Give every, every input possible and then say that you do what you think is correct. Ultimately, it is your life and your spiritual progress. Thanks, Ruizhi. So, last thing, one uh, last thing, the office example that you gave. Uh, so, in that example, basically, uh, you mean to say that uh, uh, telling the truth is, is far better in that situation? Yes, it is far better. Okay. That's from the point of your own spiritual progress. And then people compromise, right? Mm -hmm. Or better not tell anything. Just keep your mouth shut, even if the boss asks. Then you are mm -hmm. you are what you call conforming to Sastram, which says do not speak that speak a lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have not spoken the truth, but you have not spoken a lie either. Mm -hmm. So Shastram okay. says, Asatyam Mahavada, you shall not talk. That whenever you speak, speak the truth. Mm -hmm. But don't speak all the truth that you know. Mm -hmm. And don't speak untruth. Mm -hmm. There are very fine distinctions between all this. Okay, Not speaking the truth is not the same as telling an untruth. Mm -hmm. You know, but instead of yeah, these are the broad guide, guidelines the Shastram lays down. You should understand the spirit behind them. The spirit behind telling untruth is, uh, is not, not telling untruth is what? That you lose value for the truth. If you keep on telling untruth, and we all know from experience, you are all taught to give white lies from day one. It doesn't harm anybody. Right? That is the, that is the reason that people lose uh, value for the truth. And that story is brought out in that Ashwatthama, the elephant story. You know that, right? What is the elephant story? Yes. Where they say Ashwatthama is one of the elephants. And it's all no, no. thrown at no. no, Anybody no, who no. knows the story fully, will you please tell yeah, us? Yeah, yeah. Ashwatthama was uh, the son and safety. He died. Krishna said he died, actually. That was the untruth. Krishna didn't say anything like that. Oh, anybody um, else? Can I go? There was a Narova, Punjarova. So it was like uh, Dronacharya was, uh, if he will hear that Ashwadhamma has died, he will probably, you know, lose uh, his uh, confidence. confidence. Yes. So that's why there was a rumor spread which uh, says that Ashwadhamma has died, Ashwadhamma has died. And he confirmed it with Yudhishthira, which he believed. So, once no, he so Yudhishthira was told by Krishna that if, if Dronacharya asks this question, it has been said that you say yes, uh, and if you say yes, then Dronacharya will believe you because you are Yudhishthira, right? The one who never speaks the truth, and then he will stop fighting. So, when that rumor was spread and Dronacharya heard, Drona asked Yudhishthira, Is it true that Ashwatthama has died? And Drona and Yudhishthira said, Yes, Ashwatthama, he said, has died. And then he added in a very, very low voice, I mean Ashwatthama the elephant. That is the story. Okay, but who did it hurt? And it is said that, and of course, the story is a Purana story, right? 
This is the first lie that he uttered. Until that lie was uttered, the, the story goes that Yudhishthira's legs never used to touch the ground. Feet never used to touch the ground. The moment he said this, his feet came in contact with the ground. This is the story. That indication is what feet touching the ground. That indication is that telling a lie is the first lie that you tell. It's, it, it reduces the value that you give for the truth. And that is why you should not tell lies. It's practically, I don't know how many people tell lies. Okay, 99.999% tell lies. But as I keep saying, we can reduce the number of lies that we tell. You know, you take two baskets and then write, make two lists. One list will be list. Or, first of all, you make a list which you can, you know, keep in an Excel protected sheet so nobody else sees it. All the lies that I normally tell would be the name of that list. Then that list, let us say it has 500 lies. That list you divide into two. Out of these, how many are avoidable and how many are unavoidable? And then you examine the unavoidable list. And if you examine seriously, you will find that some of them are avoidable. We transfer them from the unavoidable list to the avoidable list. And if you do this regularly, you will find that the avoidable list goes on increasing. The unavoidable list goes on decreasing. You must do it very, very sincerely only to yourself because nobody else is benefited by this exercise. Got it. As a spiritual seeker, it is your own thing. That's why I said you keep a you know, 10-digit password. <laughs> you don't want anybody else to see what is happening in that list. We also say Satyam Vad, Priyam Vad. Satyam Vada, Apriyam Satyam Ma Vada. That is what it says. Satyam Vada. Tell the truth. Priyam. However, Apriya Satyam Ma Satyam Ma Vada. Never tell a Apriya Satyam. That is the actual uh, they call quotation, which, which nobody quotes. Acharya Ji, uh, if we say a white lie as we call it, just to uh, not hurt another person. Where is that? Like a simple thing. You're asked to come. You don't want to go for some other reason, but you don't want to hurt that person. The Shastram does not say Priya Asatyam Vada. <laughs> Shastram says Apriya Satyam Mahavada. Do not speak the unpleasant truth. It doesn't ask to give you permission to speak unpleasant, to speak pleasant untruths. Can you say that again, Vaitadeji? You said unpleasant. Shastram says, do not speak unpleasant truths. But it doesn't give you permission. It doesn't say speak pleasant untruths. <laughs> so <laughs> don't ever misinterpret it that way. Right. Having said that, people do tell lies, white lies, because it harms nobody. Mm. I, I don't think Shastra okay. condones that. Well, the Satyam is the absolute value. In fact, there are many stories where, you know, in the Puranas, where people do not want to tell the truth, so they don't open their mouths at all. That is the right way. Yes. Yes. But I can imagine, oh, supposing, no. supposing an old friend comes, you know, uh, let us say, who was a very pretty girl, she comes and meets you after 50 years, and she has aged very badly, life has treated her badly, she's got wrinkles and whatnot, and that. she says, how do I look? What will you tell her? Mm -hmm. Maunam is best. <laughs> no, not Maunam. You know, nod your head some vague action and say, tiki hai, yaar. problem kya hai? Something like that. Maybe we have all aged, so we all look it's, different. These, these are all very people. difficult questions, you know, but yeah. I, I don't know. According to Shastram, you can't tell lies, pleasant or unpleasant. But when you have to save somebody's life, and for that you have to speak uh, a <coughs> lie. Then the, you have to weigh the cost of the punyam which you are doing against the cost of the papam which you, are, which you would do. And then make a decision. It is an analytical decision. 
So if the cost of the saving in life is a very big punyam. For that, if you are incurring some little papam, you can always do prasthitam for that later on. Because that is why our shastram provides us with this great thing called prasthita karma. No other, no other shastram, no other religion provides that. Every other religion, you have to you know, go and say that uh, this I have done wrong and therefore I should be penalized. But here it is not like that. You have done something wrong, yes, you do prasthita karma. So what is Prashtit Karma? Prashtitam is basically uh, meant as, you know, uh, to do some, to write an out, to make right what you have done wrong. Restitution, actually. Yeah, no, what I'm trying to ask, like, how can we do that? Like, how to practice the Prashtit Karma? As well, it depends on what you are doing Prashtit again, is it not? If you have hurt somebody, what is Prashtitam for that? Then go and rectify that. By apologize. Do, do, do good to others. No, no. Supposing you have hurt some. Let us say you have hurt your husband or wife. You have hurt one. Do good to others now. As a pressure. Yeah. So, the first thing, of course, is to, if at all that person whom you have hurt can be, you know, you can go and apologize or you can, if it's a financial hurt that you have done, whether you can, you can, Compensate for that. All that you should do. And if that person is no longer in a life and you have still hurt him and you he is not reachable, he or she is not reachable, then as a compensation for that, you will do good to others. You will live a life of doing good to others. Yeah. That is also practical. Doing good to others is not easy, let me tell you. It takes a lot of effort on your part. Yes, yes. Okay, if there are no other questions, we can close the day because we don't have enough time for another one. Rabbi, see, just a small thing, maybe uh, a little confusion. Dharmika and Lokika, are they not kind of similar? I mean, is not Dharmika uh, Lokika too? No, Lokika appeals to your reputation. Dharmika talks about the duties which are, okay. you know, mandated by Shastra. That is my Dharmika. Dharma Shastra mandated duties. Okay, thank you. Sir, so, I, I want to say I had a request to make lies, if we speak lies, how can we purify our mind? First of all, we have to purify our mind, only then we can meditate and well, you have karma yoga, that is the basic way of purifying your mind, and we will talk about all that mm -hmm. in chapter three. A little bit in this chapter also. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Sir, uh, I wanted to make a request uh, that sometimes we are not able to join the live lecture. And uh, when we uh, see the lecture in on YouTube, uh, if I put a question in chat box, uh, can that be answered? Don't put it in the YouTube. Put it in uh, the group. Okay, in the group. Okay. I don't go back to the YouTube after it's posted. Okay. So just come back to the group and say that referring to this particular class, this is the answer. This is the question. Thank you. Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnamadaya Purnam Purnamadachate Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. 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 Th